morning friends uh, today we'll be discussing the suprapubic cystostomy suprapubic cystostomy is needed whenever you want to drain the bladder and periurethral access is either not available or not advisable so we'll not go much into details of the indications of suprapubic cystostomy similarly there are no significant contraindications to suprapubic cystostomy one of the contraindication can be bleeding diathesis but we have had opportunities where we had to do suprapubic cystostomy in a patient who were thrombolyzed in icu setting also so it it all depends what is the situation for which you are doing the suprapubic cystostomy the standard open suprapubic cystostomy is not so commonly done nowadays another option that is commonly used in icu settings is this kind of uh, single puncture tubes this is a malicot catheter this can be passed over a guide wire or this is a pigtail catheter which comes with a needle these are all single step procedures and this is a two step procedure these are usually done in icu settings where you do not have much time and not much of equipment but otherwise these are not commonly done because the retainability of these catheters is an issue this patient has a stricture urethra and a retention of urine but anyway before we do any suprapubic procedure these are blind procedure we should palpate and try to assess the upper limit of border see this is the bladder which is palpable and here you will see here you will see that we have applied a bandage to the penis this is to avoid bladder getting emptied by suprapubic pressure sometimes whenever it gets full so even a patient with stricture can empty the bladder completely and then you are not able to do the procedure one must remember to remove this after the procedure whenever there is a doubt it's always better to do a on table sonography to know the capacity of the bladder Yeah. This is the bladder in another plane. We'll measure the bladder volume. It's around 200 ml. We'll see the standard trolley for suprapubic cystostomy. Not much instruments are required for suprapubic cystostomy. Uh, this is the trolley. Only these things are required. This is the 11 number blade on a 7 number handle. one hemostat one needle for aspirating and confirmation of the bladder one trocar syringe for inflating the balloon suture and needle forceps and scissor what is important in this setting is the trocar and cannula so this is a half trocar this is a half trocar because the balloon channel from the catheter will come out through this the trocar that i am using right now is a 16 french trocar through the 16 french troca 16 number catheter will go but what we usually do is we put a 14 catheter through this troca so that things are easy now as i have told that we will be putting in a 14 french catheter through this troca it is always better to confirm that the catheter goes through the cannula in case something has happened something has bent so you don't have any trouble in intraoperatively So we have confirmed that the catheter goes easily, and the importance of this uh, channel is this balloon catheter can come out through this. As we have seen on sonography, the bladder was containing around 200 ml urine. I was not happy with that, and patient has a stricture urethra. So what we have done is we have hydrated him and given diuretic. Now the bladder is almost up to umbilicus. What is the importance of in the, uh, the full bladder is the peritoneum will get reflected up and we have also given local anesthesia at two finger breadth above the pubic symphysis this is the site of our incision in a patient where adrenal is not contraindicated we prefer to give lignocaine and adrenaline because that will give us good hemostasis here the incision should be very gentle skin subcutaneous tissue and rectus sheath we have to incise the rectus sheath rectus sheath is the most important thing which we need to incise because that's the only thing which will give resistance 
we are only inside the skin and subcutaneous tissue and now we are spreading the tissues with the hemostat and doing a blunt dissection there this will do till we reach the rectus sheath the rectus sheath is a tough structure it's not easy to either dissect or cut it so with the finger we can palpate the rectus sheath and with a vertical knife we cut the rectus sheath the sound of cutting the rectus sheath is a gritting sound we can hear it we also get a feeling that we are cut, cutting something see the sound with the hemostat we need to confirm that we have cut the rectus sheath adequately we should be able to see the muscle Right now, I am not happy with the incision on the rectus sheath, so I will do it again. With the finger, I can palpate that I have adequately opened the rectus sheath. Just to decrease the resistance, I will cut it a little more again. Another important step before you do a SPC is a diagnostic tap which is done with a needle. The needle goes vertical and see the urine is coming. Unless you get good diagnostic tap, you should not be putting in a trocar. So I am happy. This helps in diagnosing the urine inside, color of the urine and also the depth. So this much is the depth that is required. We have already assessed the depth and also diagnosed that there is a urine there. Now I will put my one hand here, palpate the depth, palpate the adequacy of my rectus incision and through this incision I will be putting in a trocar. The trocar should be held with the palm and the index finger should act as a guard. And this movement allows me to assess the resistance that I am likely to get. Gentle screwing motions. Gentle screwing motions will give you an idea about the depth as well as the resistance of the tissues. Once you are comfortable, try to put it inside with a thrust. First thrust was not successful. I'll with this hand, I am increasing the resistance, uh, increasing the uh, bladder the resisting there, and now we are inside. The urine is coming. I am remo removing the trocar and putting in a catheter. The catheter should go easily and almost completely. The urine is coming from the urine bag and we are inflating the balloon. Once the balloon is inflated, we will be remo removing the half sheet like this. And should confirm the easy movement of the catheter. I am not pulling the catheter completely. I am keeping some length of the catheter inside the bladder because in case the bladder deflated, gets deflated, the catheter is not pulled much. Although this catheter has a self-retaining balloon, I will never rely 100% on the balloon and all my suprapubic cystostomy I will be uh, anchoring with a suture. This suture remains there for around 2 days, after that we will remove it. This is a box stitch which has some hemostatic effect also. Another important thing, this bandage which we have applied should now be removed. Never forget to remove it. The bandage is moistened with 
covidonidine solution so that you can apply it nicely and a dressing is applied another important thing is uh, this is just a small bandage which will apply all around his abdomen tight here and we'll fix the urine bag here not the catheter but the urine bag so that in case patient moves in bed or we walks or sometimes patient becomes rowdy the catheter is not pulled another thing is if this catheter goes down if this catheter goes down there is a risk of fetal uh, fecal contamination which we do not want thank you